Alex Shuriket presents my very emotional party audiobook Stingarion Roles played by Sanya Ivanov Sinzi Ikari Marina Kalina Misato Katsuragi Rima Kagevich Ritsuko Akagi Commander Ivanov Gendo Ikari Raya Ayanawa Rei Ayanami Ali Katzman Aido Kensuke Tolia Suzuha Tozi Suzuhara First season, third episode The next morning, after the evening conversation about panties, Comrade Karina went to the door of Sanya's room and put on a cheerful expression, threw open the door and barked. Nice and chain. But, to the surprise of Comrade Karina, she saw that Sanya was already doing push-ups on thumbs. Clenching his teeth from tension, Sanya said, Good morning, Aunt Marina. Wow, she has impressed, replied. Do you exercise every morning? Yes, I do. As a great Bruce Lee, bequeaths to us. Later. Okay. When you are done, come and have breakfast. And then we'll go to training. Hearing about the training, Sunny began to do push-ups even faster and said, I soon... Some time later, Sanya and Comrade Karina already slammed the Pabeda car doors, carefully accelerating to 100 km per hour in 5 seconds. Comrade Karina, with a firm hand, drove the car through Muscovy City, which was still sleeping but Sunday morning. Aunt Marina, and today we are in a hurry. Sanya asked, wondering if he should bequeath the apartment to someone before it's too late. But the speedometer is only 120. Comrade Karina said sadly, our taking a police was. Are you afraid of speed or what? No, I'm not, but a sharp drop in speed, I'm afraid. Sanya answered, mentally promising Comrade Kevich to learn how to fix transmitters well if he gets finished alive. But, be what at his may, we rushed to the headquarters of the star, safe and sound. The promise of transmitters was somehow forgotten at once. Having again taken a ride on the already familiar elevator, Sanya was led by Comet Karina to some bright room without windows. Of all the furniture here, there was only a large table in the middle and a safe built into the wall. The surface of the table was drawn into small squares. Twisting the combination lock of the safe, Comrade Karina pulled out a sack from it. Approaching the table with a smile, Comrade Karina poured some cubes out of the sack, models of tanks, cannons and even models of Soyuzes. Well, where are you frozen? She encouraged, looking at Sanya, staring at her in bewilderment. Come on! Let's build a city and start training. Is this training? Disappointedly asked Sanya. <laughs> Do you know how much fuel oil your robot consumes? Ask our dreamer later. You try first and then turn up your noise. Raya almost cried for the first time too. And now you can even drag her from the training by the braids. Without saying anything, Sanya joins the construction of the city. So? Said Comet Karina, rubbing her palms after a model of her square with the Kremlin and the mausoleum was built on the table. Come on, I'll play for the enemy. Take positions here. Sanya almost reluctantly put the model of his robot on one of the squares of the table. Comet Karina placed on the opposite side a model of a robot similar to the one that Sanya has destroyed in the last battle and shaking two dice in her palms, commanded. Mortal Kombat begin! After only 10 minutes, Sanya was thrown into the game. After another half an hour, the partners were already playing with undisguised excitement and even cursed loudly when someone tried to cheat. 
Loud Marina! Sanya roared indignantly and pointed to one of the squares of the playing field. I just had a reserve tank here! Where did you hide it? What? Kovalkarina screeched. You want to say what a Soviet officer can effort a dishonorable act? But you've already tried to fool me three times! Give me back my tank! What an unbearable child! You better tell me why you use the Kremlin as a shield! It's good what you're not hiding behind the mausoleum! By the way, about the mausoleum, I had a cannon there! Finally, it was one o'clock in the afternoon. Hmm. Exhaled Comet Karina, brushing sweat off her forehead. Well, that's enough, I guess. The training was great. What's right? Sanya confirmed. Now, if you hadn't cheated yet, Aunt Marina, I would say what you know how to train well. I didn't cheat. It's just accidents of war. Partisan saboteurs. Okay, let's go home. Tomorrow is your first day of school, after all. So get some rest. You can go shopping, for example. <laughs> I don't want to go shopping. There is nothing in the stores but queues. Not true, sir. You can easily buy galoshes and felt boots. Wow, I have always dreamed of Adidas felt boots. Yeah, you are a worthless patriot. When Sanya and Cortina walked along the mysterious corridors of Vandergunker, Sanya said, Aunt Marina. There are all sorts of water, servos, cables, lace around here. How is it all controlled? Hmm. Akagevich would give you a lecture for two hours now. Be glad she's gone. Everything is controlled by three Radio 2 computers. Where is there, Lenhur and Stalner. True, they are of little use. We work for an hour and then for three hours the engineers look for which Radio 2 is dead. So basically everything is controlled by the Communist Party. Well, just fantastic! Sanya was amazed and seriously thought about Komitakevich's electrical club. On Monday morning, Komit Karina straightened the briefcase behind Sanya's back, sighed and said... Sanya, maybe we will take the transmitter with you. Only 8 kilograms. And the straps are comfortable. I do not want. And I'll get to school on my own. You don't have to take me in the vehicle. I don't want to be called the bourgeois. As you say, sir. Closing the door behind Sanya, Kovalkarina poured herself half a glass of fiery water according to the combat regulations and drank. After that, she took the cat in her arms and sat down in a chair, starting to think about how best to spend the day off. Suddenly the phone rang in the hallway. Reluctantly getting up, Comrade Karina left the room and answered the call. Hello, Ivanov's apartment? A grin from Rimakayevich was heard from the receiver. <laughs> How you become Ivanova? Good morning to you too, Comrade Karina said sarcastically. How is your lap caught? You are a traitor! Well, how do you live in your own apartment? I wanted to say with a guy, how do you live? Hmm, very well. I count my party several hours. So far, nothing has gone missing. Leave it somewhere openly, as if you accidentally forgot to remove it. If I do that, Oinkoink will drag it off and tear it apart. Hearing his nickname, the cat decided what the mistress was calling him and climbed onto her head. Komitakevich continued. And how is Sanya? He's okay, he's getting used to it. True, he didn't want to take the transmitter with him to school. Why? Was 8 kilograms heavy for him or what? I don't know. What news do you have? There is something. I advise you not to take special plans for your day off. Commander Ivanov has left for the Congress of the Communist Party in Leningrad City. So you will also have to be in charge if there is an alarm. Mm, I know the world is cruel to me. Half an hour later, Sanya came to school. The classroom has been empty so far. Having settled down at one of the third desks, Sanya fenced himself off from the world with the headphones of the radio. After some time, two boys entered the gradually filling classroom, to whom we should pay special attention. One of them was called Ali Katzman, and the other was Tola Suzuharov. Tola, what can you say about the recent combat alert? 
Alec asks, pointing the cheering movie camera at Tara. Alec, but your camera does not record sound. Well, anyway, show motion. I'll add sound later. But I didn't prepare. Come on, come on, talk. The film strip is not endless. Oh, what kind of a jerk this robot's pilot? He stomped his feet on the armored shutter that hides our house so much what our dishes fell off the shelves. Moreover, my sister's figurines from the film Alexander Nevsky fell and broke. I want to punch this pilot in the face. More emotions, more. Tolia waved his hands and wanted to say something else, but then he noticed Sanya and sudden surprise. And who is this? Alec redirected the movie camera to Sanya and asked rhetorically. You and? Perhaps Alec and Tolia wanted to do something, but an old and very wise teacher entered the classroom as the bell rang for the school to mark the beginning of the history lesson. During the Second World War, old and very wise teacher continued the lecture. On June 22nd, 1941, Nazi Germany, led by Adolf Hitler, treacherously attacked the Soviet Union. I lived in Leningrad at what time? and had my own plans for a peaceful future. Sanya, who listened with interest to the teacher, yawned for the sixteenth time and suddenly felt something had touched his left ear. <coughs> Turning around, he saw that a girl sitting at one of the fire desks was waving her hand to him. When the girl began to wing rhythmically with her right eye. Sanya, thanks to his experience in the camps of Soviet Boy Scouts, immediately recognized the Mars card. Is it true? Sanya began to decipher that you are from Siberia. Sanya chuckled and beeped in response. It's true. What's more, I'm a robot pilot. The girl collapsed to the floor, and Sanya, pleased with the impression he had made, turned away and again began to listen to the teacher. And all the students in the classroom behind him began to wink very intensively. When the lesson ended with the long-awaited bell, all the new classmates of Sanya slowly got up and surrounded him with bad intentions. Hey, you newbie! That curious girl said menacingly. At my house, the jar of my favorite jam fell and broke because of your trampling! Some boy hit his palm with his fist and added. <laughs> and in our house, a collection of empty bottles of my dad broke! And I got fuel oil in the apartment! cried another girl. Sanya smirked and feeling that he would now run into a conflict, exhaled contemptuously. Seal, what did you say? said Tolia. Come on, let's go out. Just you and he with me. Looking at Alec, whom Tolia Suzuhara pointed to, Sanya stood up and said, Let's go. And so, we three went out into the backyard of the school. All classmates watched from the windows on the third floor. Sanya tilted his head to the side and said, So, the figurines, the jar of jam, the bottles and fuel oil, yes? Maybe I forgot something. Alec pointed the camera at Sanya and answered, No, you haven't forgotten anything. Remove your rattle. Sanya demanded. That was an order, my friend. Tired of endless negotiations, Sanya tried to strike at Alex's jaw. <laughs> but Alex turned out to be a dexterous fellow and skillfully blocking the blow, yeah. sternly asked. Do you think the Russians can stand up for themselves? Finally a worthy opponent, Sanya said maliciously. 
and there uh, this free young man entered into battle. <laughs> Watching the terrible carnage, the girls whistled and hooted, and the guys squealed fervently, blushing with delight. Sanya defended himself like a lion, and despite the numerical superiority of the enemy, the enemy did not succeed in unequivocally defeating Sanya. Fifteen minutes after the start, all three badly beaten sat on the grass and caught their breath. Hey, newcomer, Tola breathed. You are cool. I respect. I agree. I do not hurt you. Ali confirmed, collections the fragments of the Murakami. Sanya chuckled and said with a smile, <laughs> It's Siberian mother. And you two are fine. If you attacked one at a time, I would have had a hard time in this case. The participants in the fight may have wanted to conclude a strong male union, but then approaching steps were heard from the right flank. Everyone turned their heads and saw Raya was running towards them, dressed in the uniform and with her pistol on her belt. She had only one handkerchief with her. Running up to Sanya, Raya shook her head and said, You surprised me, comrade. First day of school. But you already started a fight. Being admired the rice belt buckle shimmering with gold, Sanya could not answer anything. All right. Raya continued. Since you didn't take your transmitter with you, I came to take you. Sanya wanted to ask something, but then a siren sounded. After that, from the speakers hung here and there, an alarming voice spoke. Says Muscovy City. Her alert! All civilians immediately take cover in the nearest shelters! Who did not hide? Sonya is not to blame! Sonya got to his feet, and he noticed with surprise that there was no longer any indignation in the eyes of his classmates, and everyone was looking at him with bright hope. Then Rai took his hand and quickly pulled him along without saying a word. At the exit from the school grounds, Comrade Kalina met Sanya and Rai. Opening her eyes wide and opened the door of her car, Comrade Kalina, looking at Sanya, inquired. Sanya, what's wrong with you? Rai answered, pushing Sanya into the back seat into the salon of the car. He defended my honor and dignity, Comrade Kalina. Let's go, let's go! And don't crawl as slowly as you normally would. Comrade Kalina smiled broadly and said, Hmm, don't crawl so slowly, see. A quarter of a minute later, Sanya again mentally promised Comrade Argevich that he would become the best radio equipment repairman if he could even once again feel the F under his feet. To distract himself from foes of the Eternal, Sanya turned his head to Raya, who was sitting next to him, and asked, Raya, how are you? I'm fine. Raya answered calmly. Almost recovered. But my Seus double A is still being finalized. So this time again, you will have to go into battle alone. <laughs> well, it's nothing. By the way, Sanya, did you come up with a call sign? No. Should I do this? Certainly. Mm, what is your call sign? My call sign is Rust. Comrade Agagevich suggested this. Sanya was deep in foes. Kovit Karina, who was watching this cute scene through the rear view mirror, secretly grunted and silently continued to look at the road. The flight ended with a successful landing. After riding the same elevator, leaving Rai behind, Kovit Karina led Sanya along some unfamiliar corridor. He decided to ask. Mount Marina, where are we going? Dress up. She replied. Akagevich said that a uniform was made for you, so today you'll be handsome. Sanya was so happy that he even hiccuped. In the end, he was led into what looked like a locker room with three metal wardrobes. Complete with the wardrobes, Komitakagevich was also in the room. Greetings, Aunt Rima, Sanya blurted out. Hello, my dear future master electrician, greeted Komitakagevich. But what happened to your appearance? Comrade Karina put her hand on Sanya's head and answered. Not important. He was in an unequal battle. Comrade Agevich coughed once <laughs> and opened the doors of one wardrobe and proclaimed. Get dressed, sir. 
Sanya looked inside and froze. He was offered a completely white uniform with gold buttons. Why is it white? He asked sadly. Why are you dissatisfied? Kometagevich exclaimed. A white uniform with a black belt and black boots will look great. Your father knows a lot about the beauty of uniforms. Well, okay, Sanya said, taking the uniform in his hands. If it's my father's choice. Looking at Comet Agavich and Comet Kalina, Sanya nodded towards the door. The women looked at each other in disappointment and left. Five minutes later, Sanya appeared in front of them as a brave warrior. Comet Kalina folded her hands in front of her face and admired. Pretty. Sanya patted his empty holster and asked, Will I have a gun? Komitagevich smiled broadly and pulled a shiny revolver out of her pocket. Handing the revolver to Sanya, she said, Please, sir, this revolver is special. They say what division commander Chipayev drowned with it. Sanya took the revolver and squinted at Comet Kalinina, but she began to whistle the anthem of the Soviet Union and look at the ceiling. A little more time passed and Sanya took a seat in his cockpit, which became like a native. Sanya! Komedakevich called on the radio. Wait, Antrima, Sanya said. Raya said I needed a call sign, and I figured out which one to take. What did you say when... In short, now my call sign is... Small! From happiness, Komitagevich even burst into tears, and Sanya listened for two minutes to how her colleagues calmed her down and congratulated her. But finally, the platform on which the Series AP stood went up. Small, should we turn on the music? Comet Kalina asked. Do it! Turn on something from West today! Okay, sir. We have a whole collection of Belarusian songs. The lift ride took a little longer than the last time. Wow! Sanya was amazed. After the glass of the cockpit rose above the ground and the Kremlin ball appeared before his eyes. It's Red Square! The proud voice of Komitagevich was heard. Yes, you have several ways out. And it's a military secret how we managed to move such a bulk so far. The platform rumbled and froze. Turn right, small! There is something for you! Intrigued, Sanya turned the Soyuz AB and saw what next to it was a huge Kalashnikov assault rifle with a disc type magazine and an attached bayonet knife. What a surprise! Sanya was delighted. A gift from the Ukrainian industry! Just unpacked! Take it, pull the shutter, and you can shoot! There is no single fire, only automatic! Wait! How was this just unpacked? Again test in battle? Come on, small! You're a man, aren't you? Regardless of the fact, what's the beginner? Oh, right, don't remember. I almost forgot. At this time, in a deep shelter, being there together with his classmates, Ali Katzman took a deep breath and said, Oh, of course I understand really how to rush out into the street now to take care of photos, which then could be profitably sold. But this is the Soviet Union, not Japan. Who will let us out of the shelter during the combat alert? Tolia Suzuharev, who was sitting next to Alec and sketching something in Karl Marx's capital, allowed himself to add. Sanya, we're betting on you. Meanwhile, Sanya has already taken the weapon offered to him and hit it with the butt on the ground. Hey, what are you doing there? Comrade Agevich barked, shaking her head from the plaster that had fallen from the ceiling. I cock the shutter of the weapon in an inertial way. How else could I do it? My robot's arms don't move up, but close. And I can only hold it in one hand. Damn, it's a bug. Sanya aimed at the Kremlin, but when, remembering the golden star of the hero of the Soviet Union, this he had not yet been given, redirected to the sky. After pressing the trigger, a short burst thundered. Huge shell casings that galloped across the square, crashed six street lights, and smashed someone's car. I like it, she said. Finally, Kovet Kalina's voice came from the radio. Attention! The sound detected! Distance 1200! Small, turn to the north and prepare for battle! I'm always ready for battle! 
turning the Soyuz AP, Sanya saw his new enemy, which was quite different from its predecessor and descend from the sky on a huge parachute. Like a truly noble warrior, after waiting for the enemy to unhook the parachute, Sanya led the Soyuz AB forward and fired. The enemy immediately snapped back from its handgun, and this marked the beginning of a terrible battle. Small! Commander Garrish said through the roar of explosions. I forgot to tell you something last time, too, don't worry! What else is there? Sanya said through his teeth, pouring shells on the enemy and maneuvering. Don't let your Soyuz AB drop! If you fall on your back, you will only have 10 to 9 seconds to get up! In the event of the fall of the Soyuz AB, the protection system immediately blocks the exit of steam from the boiler and relieves pressure into the atmosphere! What kind of capitalism is this for? To prevent water from entering the steam lines! Otherwise, these lines will immediately break! In short, on the remaining pressure in the system, you will have only one chance to get up! Remember this too! Pleased me, Hunt Rim! Comrade Akevich turned away from the instruments and turned to Comrade Kalina. Kalina, look! Is there anything left of Red Square? Comrade Kalina pulled the pen out of her mouth, got up from Comrade Ivanov's desk and went over to the periscope. So, if you were still standing, but in my opinion, something is missing here. It's not my fault! Sanya replied. The Sam hit the Kremlin! Sanya pulled the trigger again, but instead of a shot, there was only a loud click. <coughs> out of ammo! He barked. After thinking for a second, he reached out to the black and yellow handle above him and asked. Andrima, has the non return valve been repaired? Yes, but what? This what? Sanya said and choked the handle down. First engineer immediately reported. The fuel oil supply line disconnected! The Soyuz AB has switched to onboard fuel oil! Comrade Agevich screamed in horror. What are you doing? I need freedom of movement! Sanya growled and with difficulty forced his robot to take the weapon by the forearm and part as if rushing into a binet attack. For the motherland! Hurra! The Soyuz AB rushed forward, darting from side to side as fast as its huge body would allow. One after the other, three enemy projectiles hit the Soyuz AB, shredding its armor. If the third hit, which fell on the head of the Soyuz AB, the glass of the cockpit shattered with splashes. Back off immediately! cried Corvette Kalina. Now! Snarl Sanya already aiming for a furious blow. With a wild roar running up to the Sam, Sanya most powerfully hit enemy's metal head with the butt of the gun. The Sam fell heavily on its back. The Soyuz AP crushed the Sam with its feet, then swung and pinned to the ground with the bayonet knife. A second later, a powerful explosion pondered and the wreckage of the Sam scattered throughout the district. Comrade Kalina smoothly sank to the floor, holding her heart. And then she said, Well, small, you love me, Ellie. Shifting her gaze to Comrade Agevich, Comrade Kalina noticed that tears were flowing down her friend's face. Rim, what's wrong with you? Comrade Agevich sobbed and gave an answer. The engine! To be continued.